Hi there. Welcome to my studio. This is the Moonbound Podcast and I'm your host, Julia, the maker behind all of the things at Moonbound Artisanship. This is a podcast about making, knitting, weaving, crocheting, spinning all the things and trying to do each thing better than we did the last thing. It has been a while since we had a full podcast episode, but I'd like to get back in the swing and try to do them more frequently for you. We're going to start right out with knitting. And because it's been a while, there's a fair amount of finished objects. And several of them have already been given away. But we're going to talk about the last one that's still here, which I'm wearing, which is my Multinoma shawl. Oh, and of course I drop it. And this is... Glow Beauty from Within in her Pan is Back colorway, and I love, absolutely love the way it turned out. It is, I think, my favorite shawl right now. Um, the only criticism I have is that I wish I had another skein so that it was even bigger. Um, I'm going to insert some pictures that my mother took for me while we were at Sheep and Wool so that um, you see it out and beautiful and... Um, Hopefully you can get a better picture of it. If you see me looking over here, that's where my notes are. Um, another finished object I have is the Baby Blue Cardi, which is knitting expat designs in her double dutch cardigan. And I gave that off to my niece, who we're going to call Turtle. Um, she is two months old now, and she looks so cute in the sweater. I'm going to try to insert a clip of the sweater right here. It was done in Cascade Yarns, Cherub Erin weight yarn, using a five mil five a US 5, 3.75 millimeter needle. I also finished a pair of socks for my nephew, Seal. He really, really wanted them and he was completely involved in the process of making these socks. I had um, actually asked my mother to find out what his favorite color was so that I could make him a sweater like his sister's sweater. They got to talking about yarn colors and all of a sudden He's asking for a pair of socks, just like Grandma's. My mother happened to be wearing a pair of socks that I made for her. And thankfully, I had enough of that yarn left over that I could make him a pair of socks with alternate colored um, toes and heels to make the yarn stretch. I won that game of yarn chicken, but only just barely. Um, it was a Red Heart with Aloe's sock yarn in watermelon stripe and hopefully i can insert a picture here oh my knit faster auntie julia socks that my nephew and i worked on together i hope he likes them he gets his socks tomorrow too and that finishes up the finished objects let me just make my notes do what they're supposed to do um i am drinking toasted hazelnut coffee in this lovely mug made by my mother-in-law, which has my moon bound on it. So the first thing I'm going to show you, and it is in this much abused but cute hummingbird bag, is what I'm calling my not so quiet lake kids sweater. It is the quiet lake kids pattern by Drops Designs. And boy, does this not look like much. This is the front left side panel. I have the back panel done. This sweater will be for Badger. It is in Wool of the Andes Sport Weight in the color Baltic Heather. I have finished the back panel and it is blocked and I did then lay it across her to make certain that it was going to fit. This is making me a little nervous. Like, this isn't very much um, width at all. 
and I think that I have almost convinced myself that instead of continuing to follow the pattern, well, all right, I'm going to continue to follow the pattern, but I'm going to do this panel as per the, pan the pattern instructions, and I'm going to do the right side front panel as per the pattern just instructions, and then I'm going to block and seam the front two panels, and I am going to look at it again. And probably what I'm going to do is knit a inch band to go in between those. So along this little seam um, from under her armpit to where it hits her in the waist, just because I want it to last a little longer. And I think if it fits, it's just going to fit. Um, I'm knitting it gauge. Everything is working out to be exactly what it is. I just think I needed to pick the next size up and I didn't, so I'm going to alter it. And then instead of building the sleeve separately, I'm just going to pick up around the arm hole and get them to um, match into the pattern and work them into the pattern from there. Um, I just wanted to have it for a little bit longer than I think she's going to have it if I do it just the way the pattern says. So um, I think I've pretty much decided on that. I am on my third ball of yarn for this project and I don't foresee yarn chicken, knock on wood. Um, my other work in progress is in this stripey bag with this cool little bead charm thing that is um, a lamp glass made by Marie Carter. Um, just does some really beautiful lamp glass. I don't actually know if she's still doing that. She makes beautiful dolls and spins yarn and does all the things. Just an incredibly talented woman. Um, ooh, these have fallen off the needles. I have these socks. Oh, um, about the sweater, it was supposed to be size 3, needle, US size 3 needles. I am doing it at a 1.5. My gauge has, my tension has just gotten so loose that everything I'm doing I'm having to drop into tinier and tinier needles, so I'm very happy with my purchase of the Chago Midi set. Um, these socks are going to be a Christmas present. You'll notice normally I do two at once. I am doing these as an afterthought everything sock. So basically I'm just knitting a long tube with a cuff at each end. Um, and I'm gonna knit myself out of this yarn, which is a Patton's North America Croy um, in Coastal Stripe. And when I get done with that, then I'll put the cuff on in this other one. It is, um, Actually, the color I used in my nephew's socks for the toes and the heel, and I immediately lost the band. I didn't even get a chance to put it into Ravelry or write it down or anything. So um, it's blue, and it's a 75-25 wool nylon. Um, beyond that, I don't know. I did get it at Fiddleheads in Kenosha. Um, so I probably could find out what it was again, but it doesn't really matter that much. Um, I'm just using this as, as car knitting, as I'm waiting for the children knitting, and I really like how it turns out. But when I get it, when I get all this yarn used up, and I have the other cuff on, then you find the middle, and you snip, and you put the toes in, and then you go back the correct me measurement, and snip again, and put the heel in. And I could run a, um bit of scrap yarn and do it as a proper afterthought. But I just, I don't want to do the math. I want to use up every bit of yarn I have for this project and see where I get to. And that is, um, that's just, you know, if I want to try a new technique, I want to try it all the way. So that's where I'm at with that. As far as casting on, I do not currently have any plans to cast on anything at all in knitting until I get the sweater done. I just need to focus on it. That said, I plan to do at least three more sweaters, kids, kid sizes, um, before Christmas. So I need to get a move on. Um, and I have a bunch of other crafti Christmas crafting. So that is part of it. I really, really, really want to cast on, um, Knit Me Expat Designs triple Dutch cardigan for myself. Um, but, uh, I might break down and cast it on before Christmas, but I am not going to be focusing on it. Um, I'd really like to participate in her cow. 
but I have to get the Christmas done. So if I get a chance, it runs through sometime in January, so if I get a chance I'm jumping on it. If not, then I will just knit it for myself when I have time. Um, but I need to focus on the Christmas. All right. So now I'm going to stop and make sure that that was taping and that I was in frame and then I'm going to move on to the next segment. Okay, I adjusted the camera angle a little bit. I hope that's a little bit better. Um, we're on to crochet. Um, the spring hexies blanket is done. Well, it's mostly done. My part's done. Um, it is a pattern by In the Yarn Garden. And it is at my mother's house, and she's going to block all of the hexes that I did, my sister did, and she did. And then she is going to stitch them together, and I believe she's working on it already. I am hoping that um, when it is all done, I can put up some pictures for you. I finished also the tulips or roses blanket, which is basically a blanket. Done off the um, crochet, crochet. Well, let me try that again. Which is a blanket I made for my niece turtle, um, based on the tulip stitch. Um, but Bunny and I both think it looks more like roses, so I'm calling it tulips of roses. I did it with uh, Lion Brand Wool Ease, so my sister can wash it when it needs to be washed, but it is nice and warm, as wool can provide. Um, really happy with the way it turned out. There'll be a picture clip in here. Um, it is folded in half, lengthwise, and there's six rows of each different color of the tulips. And I hope my sister really likes it and my brother-in-law really likes it and that my niece is kept warm and cozy by it. And that was done on um, size I hook. On to works in progress. We have my granny stripe blanket. That's the bottom. So this is one two yards across and I am doing this completely random scrap yarn and I am making up magic balls using magic knot and um, trying to pick fairly randomly in order to increase the randomness I have all these little balls of yarn some of them are my leftovers I have also absconded with all of the leftovers bits of yarn for from my sister and one of my friends and my mother has contributed um, and I'm pretty much looking for more yarn for this. This will be for mouse. Hopefully it will be done in time for Christmas. Um, but I wanted it just to be truly random. He loves all sorts of colors and it was a good way to get rid of a bunch of scrap yarn for myself. I just didn't have enough for a blanket. Um, I am using wor mostly worsted weight acrylic. Uh, there have been a cute couple um, decays that have snuck by me, but either I like the color or I like the texture. It is, for the most part, soft acrylic, um, but there are a, cute, a couple in there that are a little bit firmer. Um, really like the way it's turning out, like the way it looks. I've had the children um, grab from the bucket I have of little bits and ball bobs. Um, you know, go grab me five balls at random, I'll make up a magic cake, and then... Um, just crochet that one in when the next one's done. I have four cakes sitting and waiting for me when I get done with the one that's on there and then a whole bunch still in the bin. So that is working out really well. As far as cast outs, I haven't cast it on, but I am seriously wanting to do a pair of crocheted socks. Um, crochet Circle, Crochet Luna, uh, and um, Crafternoon Treats are running a, there may be some other ladies, it's a big thing, um, but those are the three that I watch that I know are participate that are, are working on this, are doing a um, crochet sack along in October, and I had been really looking forward to it and really excited about it, and projects have just gotten, 
you know, ahead of me and um, I'm socked in, but I'd really like to, I'd really like to try my hand at a pair of crocheted socks. So I may set things aside briefly and um, cast on a pair of socks, but I haven't decided to do that yet and I, um, I may not. I don't know. It's just kind of one of those things. Okay, that brings us to spinning. And I have done a lot of spinning since last we talked. Um, the last thing we talked about was the wool pot lock yarn that I'm working on. That is continuing. I did end up buying some um, storage bobbins. They're cardboard bobbins. They are not useful for spinning on, but they do really do a good job of holding the um, the yarn on something so that you can continue using your bobbins. And they're two dollars a bobbin. I think two twenty. Um, if you bought ten of them, which I did, because it was twenty dollars for one or twenty two dollars for ten. Um, they were different websites, but I, I initially thought, well, I'll just get one and see if I like it. And then I went, hmm, that math is bad. I will get 10 and if I don't like it, I'm still out the same amount of money. I do like them. I really like them. So I have two um, bobbins done in um, 40 wraps per inch singles. The plan is eventually to two-ply them and eventually beyond that to make it into a lightweight sweater for hiking and backpacking. I set that aside to do Spinzilla. Um, I had been Team Milky last year, and I had a wonderful time with those ladies. They decided this year not to have a team due to family and business stuff and, you know, being viciously attacked by life, and I think that was a good decision for them. But I still wanted to participate, so I went and found myself a team. I competed on the West 7th Wool team. It is a yarn and wool shop in the Fort Worth, Dallas area. I think they call it Dallas Fort Worth. I'm not from there. I've never been there. Um, but I've got a lot of family down that way and they just seemed like a fun group of people and they were a fun group of people. Um, so I figured I'd walk you through everything that I spun for Spinzilla. If you've been following my daily vlogs this month, um, then you've seen it all. But um, here's a here's another shot of that. This is Gatlin. It is seven ounces of Gotland that I picked up at uh, Shape and Wool. And I am very pleased with how this turned out. It, I don't know if you're gonna be able to tell now, it has quite a sheen to it. It was a little bit difficult to spin in a timed situation. Um, and I had to go back and, and basically listen more to the wool, which is something I normally do, but I was in the mindset of I have to do that as much as I can, as fast as I can. So I struggled a little bit with this until I went, yeah, all right, I gotta calm down. I gotta figure out what this is saying and it, it's dense and it was compacted and I needed to take the time to prep it properly and get it moving. Um, and after, after I allowed it to be more a conversation between the materials and myself and um, approached it more in the way I normally would have, I really enjoyed spinning it, but I had to get past that. Um, there is this skein, which is a merino blend made by the Ashford Company, and it is um, got all sorts of different colors in here. I think the way I spun it made it a little bit more subtle, which you could also say muddied it up a little bit, but I don't really think it's muddy. You can still see all of the individual colors, um, and it was predominantly a brown wool blend to begin with, but I think it's just a little bit browner, a little bit more toned down because of the way I spun it. And perhaps I will pick up some more of that blend and try other methods of color management just to see if that is a correct assessment or if it was going to be about this color anyway. I spun up all of this. This is, um, wool mixed with camel that I got in a de-stash from a lady at my guild. I don't know the percentages. Um, I'm not going to be offering this one for sale. 
at least not as yarn. I'm going to weave it up. I want to see it woven. I want to see how that turns out. Um, and because I don't know the percentages, it would be, um, I would, wouldn't feel comfortable because camel is, is such a luxury fiber. And I don't know how much camel is in here. Um, it is really soft, but it also has a fair amount of vegetable in it. I also spun up, my notes have disappeared and the yarn is falling off my lap. This, which I dyed myself, um, and this was the first time I've ever done a fractal, and I really want to play with some more fractals. Love the way this turned out. So bright and so colorful. I had initially thought that it was um, more rainbowy, but as I got into the roving, I realized that it wasn't um, a rainbow. It has no purple, and it has very, very little green. So not a true rainbow but I still like it. I also did my extra as a three ply, um, which produces a totally different kind of colorway. Um, I really enjoyed my time at Spinzilla. I um, ended up having the most yardage of anyone on the team at 3,334 yards, which is pretty cool. And I want a gift certificate didn't actually show you all the yarn yet because there's this and this isn't skeined up properly because I had actually already done this is done on a Turkish drops bundle and I had already done a turtle while I was at sheep and wool so I left that um, off and I'm going to spin it onto this and make it a continuous strand but for the purposes of keeping the spinzilla yarn separate I have not added in and I have um, have another little bit of this so I'm hoping that I will end up with this is um, about a hundred yards and the other bump is about the same size so I'm hoping that when I am all done with it I'll have about 300 yards of this this is Cormo and I basically just bought this fiber to play with the drop spindle that I bought at Shape and Wool and I really ended up liking both of them um, so that is what I have for spinning I did a small amount of weaving, uh, which is basically just this bracelet here. It is uh, tablet weaving done in a backstrap loom style. And I am very pleased with the way it turned out. Just ribbon closures and a simple lobster clasp on that because the focus is the weaving, not the beadwork. Um, I plan to do some more of this. I have more length of this particular pattern and I plan to do some more weaving in the near future, but that is all I have to show you today. Which brings us to sewing and sadness. Um, very often when I buy fabric, I wash it right away. Sometimes I don't. Usually I can tell the difference. I couldn't. So I made myself a skirt. It is one of my make nine for the year. And I really liked it. It's a very simple little skirt. It was comfortable. It fit reasonably well. I wasn't entirely happy with the fit and was going to do some alterations. And I washed it. And when I pulled it out of the dryer, I knew exactly what happened. And that was I hadn't pre-washed the fabric. And now this has shrunk and is too small. Um, I'm not going to take it apart. I'm going to tuck it up to a learning experience. Um, and we'll see where we go from there. But um, I really like the fabric. It is just a, um, a cotton that has a little bit of linen in it, and which is why it's so wrinkly. And I wasn't going to iron it just to show it to you. and than not get to wear it ever. So, um, yeah, I was feeling very pleased with myself and very accomplished. Look, I'm, I'm doing what I said I was going to do and the goals that I set out for myself and, and, um, then the washing machine happened. So that's that. All right. Um, moving right along to dyeing. I have to grab some things. So we had a dye day at uh, the Spinning Guild. 
and we all got together at one of the ladies' houses. And when I got there, I found out that I was um, building an indigo bed from a kit that was several years old and uh, hadn't been kept the driest. But we get it done. And lots of people were able to dye their stuff. Um, I had just brought with me a cotton yarn to dye. And I had just seen Rachel Smith do um, a dye, an indigo vat, where she just took her skein of yarn and tied it in a knot to do resist, um, let it sit in the indigo for a couple of minutes, pulled it out, and then rested the whole thing on a spoon so that the ends were dipping to get an ombre and a resist to her yarn. And so I thought, well, that looked neat. I'll try that. And I really like how it turned out. This is about 400 yards of very thin cotton that my parents got me for um, Christmas last year. And it just happened to be ready. So let's go with that for the dye day. I have no idea what I want to use it for. Um, there was a whole bunch of other um, dye vats going on that day. I brought just a little bit more fiber with me. Um, this is about two ounces, maybe, of Textel, Texel, Texel, T-E-X-E-L, um, which is a meat breed sheep that one of the people at Sheep and Wool last year was selling. Um, it is marked Felton Core Fiber, um, but it's actually fairly soft and I bought it because I want to try all the different breeds so I am going to spin it up. I didn't dye everything that I had. Um, this is dyed in a cochineal dye bath. So I absolutely love this pink and I was pretty much the last one to throw into the, the dye bath um, when it was still plain cochineal. They added some matter and I think some lemon juice later to get different results. But um, I'm really happy with it. It's like the dream of cotton candy color. So um, that is really all I dyed recently. Um, and now I'm going to talk about all of the cool things I picked up at Sheep and Wool. Um, you've already actually seen two of them because I've spun them up. I've got the Gotland and the um, Ashford blend of Merino. And while I was in that booth, a friend of mine got um, some gauntlet for herself. And I said, you know you want to buy more than that. She didn't listen to me. And I don't think she had actually fully made it home before she was asking me to go pick her up some more. So I did, and I picked up my mom, picked up some for my mom, and I kept the rest of the pound beyond what they, they took. Um, and that worked out really well. So I'm going to grab the rest of the stuff and you can see all of the things that I got. Mm -hmm. So I picked up these two bags of just little tiny samples. There's 21 colors in each thing and that is going to be for a project. Um, this is from the Yorkshire Rose Farm, really lovely people. And this is Romney, oh, it says Romney, oh, this one is entirely Romney, and this one says Romney and Rambolet. So, I don't know if it's a cross or if it's just some or some and some or the other. So, I'll have to take a closer look at that later. That won't affect anything I'm doing. I got this book which I haven't had a chance to read yet, but really, really wanted from the first moment I saw it. One of the ladies in our guild had bought herself a copy and then I went immediately to Amazon and they were sold out. So I was very, very glad to see that it's there. Um, it's written by a physical therapist. Um, and so the idea is to keep you knitting and crafting as long as possible, as comfortably as possible. So I think that is that is a really good idea. I also picked up, and these are going to crinkle, and I'm sorry, I'm just not taking them out of the bag, some Angelina in this lovely sapphire color. 
in sparkly teal and this pretty emerald. I got from Bumblebee Acres Farms a download for the Taurus Mara pattern. I'll link that in my show notes so you can see the pattern. It's just a download code. This was mostly a joke, but not entirely. This is stainless steel fiber. It is conductive. And um, both my son and my husband have talked about me knitting a steel, uh, spinning a steel wool um, yarn and then knitting them a car. So um, I couldn't resist this. I have no plans for it. It is simply to exist. I picked up this book by Priscilla A. Gibson Roberts, um, High Whirling, A Spinner's Guide to an Old World Skill, and it has beautiful line drawings, and I'm really excited to read that. I got myself some weaving cards. I got myself a backstrap bar to help with the weaving. Hey, just found my power charger thing. Power charger thing. English we are. I did buy the little Turkish spindle that I used during Spinzilla. I do not have it downstairs. Um, and I'm not going to go racing up and down the stairs again. I'm sorry. Uh, but, um, so you've probably seen it in a couple of the vlogs. If you haven't, you'll see it again in the future. I really like that purchase. I have not yet spun on this, but I just am fascinated with Russian spindles. And this is the prettiest, simplest one I've seen. And I'm really excited to get to start playing with this. Um, in addition to picking up fiber for friends who didn't pick up enough, I also played shopping for my sister. Having just recently given me a niece, she was not in any fit condition to come with us, so I did some shopping for her. We took pictures at the booth and sent them to her and then she picked out what she wanted and she got, um, this is Bayou Basin, she got uh, two skeins of their Gobi silk and baby camel. It's a 6535 and it is just so smooth and soft. Uh, absolute lovely. There's this skein. And um, Let's see here. It does have a colorway name, but it is 08-078. And she also had us pick her up. That's falling off my lap. This skein. Which is colorway number 02-078. Zero seven eight, and I think they look really nicely t nice together too. So they'll work if she wants to use them together, or if she wants to use them separate. And I'm a terrible, terrible person because that was in September, and it's the middle of October, and I have seen her since, and I forgot to take her this bag. Um, they are just super, super lovely people. Uh, over at Bayou Basin, they told us all about different yaks that they have on the property and, the, and how they behave and. It was a super, super fun time. Um, now in my notes it says, talk about your plans. <sighs> Maybe I should have put some more notes in there. <laughs> I, um, I am working at a design for a baby dress. And um, I'm going to uh, use Turtle as my... Uh, designer, design model there. Um, not that she's going to appear in the blog, uh, but that she is going to be who I'm knitting for. So, that's fun. I plan to get all of the Christmas done. I'm building some advent calendars for friends. I am trying to get everything organized so that I can be more relaxed during Christmas, and I do intend to do Vlogmas this year. I am really enjoying Vlogtober. 
Um, I am, however, pretty much not doing the weekends and I'm pretty consistently a day or so behind, maybe two, sometimes. Um, but still, I really like it and I've enjoyed this extra time that I have taken, taken for myself, given to you, taken, um, just to, to work through what I'm doing and I feel like I get more accomplished when I'm excited to talk to you about it. So that's where we're at with that. Um, I hope that you are crafting. I hope that you're enjoying it, that it's working well. I hope that you win all of your games of yarn chicken. At least the logical ones. Um, and I hope that you have an absolutely lovely day. Thank you for watching. I hope that you liked this video. If you did like the video, please hit like and think about subscribing. Thanks. Gracie made this. And it is going to my beautiful new little niece. I figured I'd catch a little bit of it on the camera and show you her beautiful work. Let's see if I slip my hand back in.